Disclaimer. During this video, I will be taking some big jumps to reach my conclusions, and some things that I'm sure that were never meant to be looked into seriously will be. Every detail will be assumed to be completely intentional, because without doing that, there wouldn't really be much. So while you watch this, I want you to remember that I know that this is silly. Trust me, I do. And this video probably isn't organized that well, and I do apologize for that. These characters are also mostly just backdrops to Spamden's story, so a lot of things I'm going to talk about with them is going to loop around to how they feel about him, and then I'll try to discern what traits can be gathered from their opinions on him during the subjective portions of this video. To cover my ass and for a meaningless sense of completion, I will go over all of the combinations of specific colored Addisons, what the personalities would be and how it would change depending on which scenario of which Addison's personality carries over or don't to other scenes. I will go in depth specifically in the subjective portions. While sometimes you can tell when it's maybe supposed to be a separate Addison, there are times where you can. For example, it's safe to assume when going to separate shops and you see two identical Addisons across the street from each other, then they're meant to be separate entities. But after Stamped and Neo, when they are lined up in the trash zone, there's multiple identical ones in line. It's impossible to match which ones were which store owner. That is why I am looking into the different possible combinations of the Addisons. And even if we can't physically see two of the same Addisons in the same alleyway, we are also going to talk about an interpretation where each specific colored Addison is the same person. So we organize in two sections for each Addison color, objective and subjective. The first section will be an attempt at an objective view that will function like a bullet point list. It's just to get the bare bone points across, so it will probably be pretty flat. But we're gonna get through this together, I believe in us. For the subjective portion, I'm going to go into what I think the objective bits mean. So, let's get into this family mess of a video essay about characters that are on screen for about 7 minutes in a 5-6 to six hour chapter. The Yellow Addison. I'm doing them first because they're the easiest. Why are they the easiest? For a reason I don't see a lot of people mention. They don't show up until the alley scene. I honestly don't know why anyone would notice or care unless they're super invested. Uh, but still, I didn't notice until I was compiling notes and it surprised me. Anyways, that just makes it quicker for me to get the information from them. Okay, the first yellow Addison you see when you're walking down the queue says... He was... Like the rest of us. Just, a little unlucky. For some reason, his products never seemed to hit, and the Lightners never even looked his way. Poor guy. This first statement has the most pauses out of all the present Addisons at 5 pauses. They use soft language when referring to Spamton, just a little unlucky for some reason, and they're the only one that uses the term like poor guy. The second yellow Addison says, Even so, he only got more and more successful. He moved into a luxurious room in the Queen's Mansion. He started bragging about big TV deals, big cars, big commercials. But then things started to crack. It seems like whatever was helping him disappeared. His sales dropped to zero. And everything came crashing down. Miss Addison has the second most amount of pauses in their text with four. The words themselves seem purely objective. If they were to be considered the same creature than both times Chris spoke to them, they were an outlier when it comes to the pauses. Both conversations and comparisons with the other Addisons have more than the average amount of pauses, with a total of 9. And I'm just gonna get the score of how many pauses there are with the other Addisons out now, so you know that 9 is an outlier compared to the others. So the first blue has none, second has 3, pink has 2, and orange has 2 in the uh, alley scene. So again, Yellow has a lot more pauses than the others, and sometimes uses soft, empathetic language when referring to Spamton. Subjective Yellow As previously said, this one has the most pauses out of all the Addisons when he talked to them in this section, 5. I would already interpret this as a sign of emotion towards Spamptons that the others don't exhibit in the same way. I think they at least feel bad for Spamton. 
Just the phrase they used seemed so tender. They bring up how similar Jamdin was to the rest of them, and if we are to take what one of the pink Addisons says seriously, and all the Addisons were actually jealous of Spamdin, and this yellow is just looking back and is now recognizing how similar they all were. That just feels really sincere. Maybe they feel guilty over what happened? Maybe that's why they're outwardly sympathetic towards Spamdin. They continue on to call Spamdin poor guy, which is a very clear sign that this yellow feels bad for Spamdin. Uh, this one seems empathetic in this case towards Spamdin specifically, considering we have nothing else to go off of. They're the Addison with the second most amount of pauses at 4. As I established a minute ago, I interpret the pauses as an amplifier of sorts, to whatever the main emotion being exhibited in the text is. Given that this Addison's portion does not show any clear emotion, at least to me, then it's hard to analyze much about this part. But if you were to consider them both the same person, then those pauses, of course, would continue to amplify what I think of as their empathetic and remorseful speech. With Yellow 2, while you can attempt an analysis of where the pauses are and how that would reflect on them and what they're like, I feel like that would be far too speculative, but with at least a jumping off point with some of the personality traits shown in the first eulogy statement, it feels safer to look into that. With the first part, the pauses come before they say the sympathetic parts of Spamton's backstory. That makes it seem like the pauses are there so they can muster up the strength to say it. Again, because right now, I'm considering the two Addisons the same, this thought process will carry on to the next part. There's a consistency that almost all of the reminiscent statements and sad faces come after the pause. Except with one, at least on the surface. He started bragging about big TV deals, big cars, big commercials. This doesn't seem like something that would be grouped in with the vest, but considering they all apparently got jealous of his success, which led to them leaving him, they may consider the beginning of him getting popular as the start of the end of their relationship, which is why it could be looped in with the other post-pause phases. Also, because we don't see this Addison work at all, while the other Addisons we see do, maybe they're down the lock with their work, or for whatever reason, willfully stopped working. Orange objective. Moving on, the orange Addison. Orange number one. You first meet this Addison when they're standing in front of a nondescript store, and they say, We are Addisons. All we do is advertise. This is an advertisement too. Advertisements are now only $9.99. Don't like advertisements? Block ads for only $9.99. Change your mind? Bring them back for only $9.99. They sell ads, ad blockers, and ad unblockers. If you go back to speak to this Addison before the Spamton fight, then they say, Spamton? Haven't heard that name in a long time. This shows that they don't talk or hear people talk about him. Specifics of why seem unknown. Orange 2. We meet this second orange Addison in front of a clothing store, which is bigger than some of the other generic stores. They say, Clothing store sale. Sale. We're selling this for 75% off. Only 300 dark dollars. They are selling a mannequin that resembles Spamton wearing a dress that looks like the dress Metaton wore. And not only are they selling this mannequin, but they're selling it for 75% off. After selling the mannequin, they say, Great doing business with you. The orange Addison does not make the player aware that they are also buying the mannequin. Most players would just assume that they're buying the dress. The mannequin lessens the damage from puppet slash cat attacks by 35%. And it also reduces Frampton Neo related bullets and some bullets by task and task manager. We are going to talk more about that mannequin later. Neo fight, they say. Spamton? We don't talk about that around here. That shows none of the Addisons openly talk about Spamton. They also refer to Spamton as that. The first and only orange Addison in the lineup says. He started to get a little desperate. I heard he started looking for any way to become more popular. Somehow, he made the right phone call and found someone. Or, was he found by someone? They must have been helping him, 
because suddenly he was on the phone all the time. The phrase I heard shows they had to hear about some aspects of Scrampton's life from someone else. But they know he was on the phone all the time firsthand. Overall, they just seem curious about what happened to Scrampton. If you were to consider Orange Number One the same as the one you met in the alley, then this Addison sells ads, ad blockers, and ad unblockers. They seem more passive from this point of view. Them saying, Spamton? Haven't heard that name in a long time. Combines well with the curiosity exhibited during the alley segment. Again, that previous statement shows that there's not a lot of talk about spamping for whatever reason. Now, if orange number two was the same as the one in the trash zone, then this Addison sells closing and in front of this store is a mannequin that looks exactly like spamping wearing a dress. This Addison is selling this mannequin and seems desperate to do so. Free neophyte, they refer to spamping as that and uses the word we, which includes them in not talking about him. And during the trash zone talk, they just felt confused and largely neutral on Spamton. If all orange Addisons were the same, then this Addison would sell ads, ad blockers, ad unblockers, and clothes. They would also have that dress slash mannequin that they want to get sold. Free Neo, they tell Chris that they don't want to hear about Spamton. Free Neo, they tell Chris that they hadn't heard of Spamton in a while, and later says them and the other Addisons don't talk about that. After Neo, they speak largely n neutrally and seem distant in the situation revolving around Spamton. Orange Subjective Orange 1 They're standing in front of one of the smaller stores and selling one of the more generic products an Addison can sell, while some of the other Addisons sell more specific products like clothes and tea. There are two Addisons, this one and a blue Addison, who sell the same thing in the same way. And in the game, it does show that Addisons aren't specifically restricted to sell in the same exact way. An example of such can be shown with both a blue and a pink Addison. They both sell shoes, but for a very different purpose. One sells the shoes for clothing, and the other sells it for food. This shows that in the game, even if a character sells the same thing, they can differentiate it. But this orange Addison shares the same hook with the other blue Addison. The only difference is that they go on for a little bit longer, and given they are personifications of ads, it would be expected that they would all be selling specific products. With the selling ad blockers and that would mean that any new customer they made wouldn't come back. They also sell ad unblockers too, but it feels very unlikely someone would buy that. It just feels kind of productive overall. And desperate. Before Neo, they say they haven't heard Spamton's name in a long time. This isn't admitting any fault, while some of the other statements you get during the section of the game do. We don't talk about that around here. And this statement also admits that they do remember Spamton. This is the only statement you get in this portion of the game that isn't outwardly dismissive of Spamton. This Addison could be having a harder time in business considering their more generic products and method of selling, and that what they're selling is more counterproductive towards getting more customers, which feels like a desperation move. Them saying they haven't heard Spamton's name in a long time could express a lot of different emotions. I personally see it as reminiscent because of how different it is from the other responses. But it could also be better in a tone of annoyance so that it could fit in with the rest of the others. Orange 2. They have one of the bigger stores out of all the Addisons, which could mean they're doing pretty well for themselves. They're selling the Spamton mannequin and clothes, I'm assuming, but they're selling the mannequin for a discount. The fact that they had the mannequin to begin with would mean something, and they did have the mannequin for a while after Spamton's disappearance. I say this because I feel like it would make more sense that the mannequin was around for a while instead of it just randomly being made recently. Also, if Chris has it equipped in the Spamton fight, it reduces the damage Spamton deals. Maybe that's because he recognizes the mannequin, dress, or both? Why would a mannequin that looks like him be around while he was? I don't know. I mean, I've heard some theories, but I'm not gonna talk about that here. Anyways, they aren't just now getting rid of the mannequin out of some sort of hostility because they would have done that a while ago if that was the case. That also goes for any other emotions. If, if they were severely saddened by the reminder of him, then they would have gotten rid of it when the disappearance was so fresh and emotions therefore more high. So it's more likely that they're trying to get rid of it to try and move on. They later say, Spamton? We don't talk about that around here. They do admit that they remember Spamton, but apparently not with any fondness. This shows that as a mask, the Addisons don't talk about Spamton. It also reveals a lot that they refer to Spamton as that. He's not even a person to them anymore, he's just a that. A situation to be endured. 
isolated and distinct, right? Maybe there's someone that personally enforces that no one talk about spam thing. One of the blue Addisons says the same thing, so maybe they aren't the only one that would enforce this. Anyways, this Addison is shown to have some part in the disdain towards spam thing that a couple of the other Addisons just don't seem to exhibit. Overall, having the mannequin, while well, calling spam thing at that, feels conflicting. Maybe the bitterness came recently and the mannequin was around early in spam thing's disappearance. Maybe the more they sat with what happened and the sadness, or whatever emotion, faded, the more angry they became. And it came to some kind of breaking point where they just wanted to get rid of the mannequin that reminded them of him. Thus selling the mannequin for 75% off. And just not wanting to hear about him anymore. Ally Orange. The phrase I heard implies they weren't deeply entrenched in Spampton's downfall and ended up hearing of it from someone else who maybe was. But they were close enough to him to know that he was on the phone all the time firsthand. Overall, they just seem curious about what happened to Spam Dane. Also, the by someone feels like it's made as a realization that they're currently having. The phrase coming right after a pause that comes right after what seems to be the original thought and the by being enunciated was the thought they all had that Spam Dane found someone himself. The distinction of Spam Dane finding someone and being found instead is something that the game considers important enough to point out. Maybe because it strengthened Spam Dane thematically by weakening his agency in the whole situation even more, which lends itself nicely to the whole freedom motif and him never having any agency even when he was a big shot. While him finding the caller himself would give him some power over his story. I don't know why this distinction would affect the Addisons, any reason I can think of feels like it has some odd implications. I think it fits more as something for purely thematic purposes. Orange One and Alley Orange. I find it hard to say what it would mean if they were the same character. Maybe because they sell more generic products and thus more replaceable, it makes them more interesting as Spamton because he was a little unlucky before he became big. That feels like a leap though. Orange 2 and Alley Orange. It feels like they're purposefully distracting themselves from the Spamton situation. They seem to have some apparent emotions about Spamton, unlike Orange Number 1, where they just felt kinda out of the loop and maybe largely neutral on Spamton. Number 2 feels like they do care in some way. Following through with my previous interpretation, they were so invested in Spamton to the point that they had the mannequin in the first place, and then tried so hard to get rid of it by selling it for such a discount and under false pretenses, because the mannequin is unknowingly attached to the dress. They would have to have known him somewhat personally for them to invest so much emotion into the mannequin. If they did get to the point of bitterness, which can be seen by the that statement, and sold the mannequin for that reason, then it would make sense that they would distance themselves from Spamfin by saying, I heard. And then they slip and personally include themselves when first hand noticed Spamfin was on the phone all the time. All. The little stores don't really mean anything in this interpretation because the bigger store would imply that they're overall doing well for themselves. Spamton? We don't talk about that around here. It's said after the kindest statement towards Spamton during this section of the game which may show they aren't not talking about Spamton out of some sort of resentment, but don't really hold that sort of negative emotions against him. Maybe the negative thing is said to get them to stop talking about him. Maybe they're parroting someone else's viewpoint with the negative statement. Due to the other statement being positive towards Spamton, this seems to overall even out to something more neutral, leaning towards positive if you believe they're parroting, or just trying to get away from the situation. This order of them remembering Spamton then distancing themselves, is shown in the pre neo lines and them selling the mannequin. Blue Objective The third Addison we will talk about is the Blue Addison. The first thing Blue Number 1 says to Chris is, Don't like advertisements? Block ads for only $9.99. Change your mind? Bring them back for only $9.99. The first time meeting Blue, they're standing in front of a nondescript store and selling ad blockers and ad unblockers, and they speak in what seems to be a normal manner for Addisons, especially considering that they repeat the later half of the first thing Orange says. Pre-Neo, they say, Spam ton? We don't talk about that around here. The Addisons, including them, don't talk about spam ton for unknown reasons. Blue too is selling shoes in front of a bigger store. They say, Come to Cyber Shoes too. Free samples. Would you like one? Instead of selling it as just a clothing item, they are giving it away as food. No other Addison does something this outwardly odd with their product. Spamton? No idea who you're talking about. They say before the Spamton Neo fight. 
Right now, just following the narrative of Blue 2, we don't know if they're lying or not. The first Blue Addison to speak in the line says, Night after night, when we all went to the same cyber grill, he'd shoot his mouth about making it big someday. You just watch. Someday, I'm gonna be a big shot. This seems like a largely neutral retelling of the Spamton backstory, so I have to assume that we all means everyone in the alley. So everyone present has some kind of relationship with each other, including Spamton. The next blue in the lineup says, The day he was to be evicted from the Queen's mansion, I went to his room to check on him. But he wasn't there. There was only a phone hanging off the handle. He must have left in the middle of a conversion, because I could still hear someone on the other end. But when I put the receiver to my ear, there was nothing but garbage noise. Compared to the others, this is more of a personal retelling. Blue is the only one who went to see Spamping. It's unknown why the others did not. After the main part of the game and you go back to your town, you can find this Blue Addison. This place is a great deal. All kinds of new customers. Want a free sample? Just $4.99 to try a bite of these clothes. They are given away clothes as food, and the clothes are taken from the Vowsy dummy and put onto a mannequin that looks like Spamping. Let it be known that even if you buy the other mannequin for orange, this mannequin still shows up. So this is a separate second mannequin. But unlike Orange's mannequin, Blue isn't trying to sell this one. If Blue won, first Blue you see in the alley and the Blue at the end of the game are the same, then they sell at blockers and at unblockers. And when they are asked about Spamton, they mention that them and the other Addisons don't talk about Spamton. Again, refers to Spamton as that. Then, in the alley, they give a neutral retelling about Spamton. Later, they show up selling clothes as food and has a Spamton mannequin. Blue One Second Alley in Blue Town Blue One Second Alley in Blue Town are the same person, then they sell ad blockers and unblockers. And regarding Spamton, they say they don't talk about that. Before Spamton got evicted, they were the only one that went to check on him, even though he wasn't there. Later, has a Spamton mannequin. If Blue 2, First Alley Blue, and Blue Town were the same person, then they sell shoes as food. Before the Neo fight, they say they don't know who Spamton is, they speak neutrally about Spamton later, and later again, close food, Spamton mannequin. If Blue 2, Second Alley, and Blue Town were the same person, they sell shoes as food, they say they don't know who Spamton is, they were the only one that tried to check on Spamton before he was evicted, mannequin. If they were all the same character, then Blue sells ad blockers, unblockers, and chooses food. Before the Neo fight, they say them and the other Addisons don't talk about Spamton, and they also don't know who he is. They recall a past moment with Spamton in the alley, and speak on how they tried to check on him before he was evicted. When he was back in Castletown, they sell clothes as food and has the mannequin. Blue's subjective. Blue one. This is the exact same thing Blue one said, so I obviously don't have anything different to say. Just go back, like, in a couple minutes if you want to hear it again. Yada yada, more generic, harder time selling. This one's a little shorter than the other ones, so maybe more generic, but I'm not going to mention that again. They later say, Spam ton? We don't talk about that around here. Again, very dismissive of Spamton, similar to Orange One. Maybe they somewhat relate to Spamton's early stages of how small and generic their store is. Again, I said this more in depth in the Orange section and they don't like that, and thus it doesn't seem to want to think about him because it hits too close to home, and look what happened to Spamton. Blue 2. They own one of the bigger shops, mid-range, which points to them doing well for themselves. But for their job specifically, this one has the funnest job. I really like the whole bait and switch that goes on. When they introduce themselves as someone who sells shoes and then offers a free sample, you're confused. After accepting, you get a little shoe with a toothpick through it. The specification of the shoe being small makes it seem like it was never made for wearing, just for eating. Or is it only small because it's a free sample? After the confusion subsides a little bit, you of course want to try this sample, that is apparently a food item, and you, and you don't even get to learn if it tasted good or how much it healed because Lancer eats it. There's really nothing else about them shown here, just an odd individual. Seems like someone who has fun with their job though. Right now, with the given information about this Addison, we can't say for certain that Spam ton? No idea who you're talking about is a lie. If it isn't, then they probably don't know about him because some of the other Addisons are vehemently against talking about him. But random strangers are shown to at least passively know about Spamton. 
So they might just not know Spamton personally, if this statement was taken to heart. Alley Blue 1 This feels like it's just a neutral retelling. Like, I know I've made a lot of mountains out of molehills already, but I'm at least trying to make inferences based on the text. Have I succeeded? I don't know. And it doesn't really matter right now, because for me, textually, I don't see anything noteworthy here. If I were to pull something completely out of my ass, then I would say it sounds somewhat wistful. When I read it to myself, it sounded wistful. Sometimes, when I'm watching a playthrough of this game for the 20th time, they seem to read it out loud as wistful too. But again, that's not supported by the text. Ali Blue 2 This is the first time in the backstory battalion when Addison is speaking of their own experience concerning Spamton. Something that the others have nothing to do with. No we's, only eyes. Only them going to see Spamton. They specifically go when he's to be evicted. They haven't spoken to each other in a while, and they wanted to help him in some way. Implied in the line, check in on him. But Spamton left before they could. And after that, there was no sign of Spamton since, at least none that they mentioned, and he was possibly presumed gone or dead. None of the other Addisons are ever mentioned going to check in on him. Some of the other Addisons are shown to be hostile towards him, so maybe they experienced some pushback when they went to check on him. They seem to be the only one that wanted to help him at that point, or at least cared enough to try to. Your Town Blue Spamton's death may have inspired them to embrace his memory more. Considering they had their own mannequin to do so with, they used that. We know that it is specifically their mannequin, because as I previously said, even if you buy Orange's mannequin, this still shows up at the end of the game. They didn't even have it for explaining any goods originally, because we didn't see a blue Addison with a mannequin before now. We also don't know where the mannequin was before then, or maybe they just made the mannequin to replace the one that Orange sold, so they could have something to commemorate Spamton. Because if it wasn't for sentimental reasons, then why would they put it out now only after they knew Spamton was officially gone? And unlike the Orange Addison, they aren't selling this mannequin. They're just using it as a display for their food clothes. Blue one, Alley blue one, and Town blue. They may have changed how they've used Frampton over the course of the game. Before the Neo fight, they used the line, We don't talk about that, which shows that they have some sort of negative emotion towards Frampton. But as previously discussed in the Town Blue segment, the mannequin is something that I view as them commemorating him. And I have to assume that the reason they all went to the alley after the player beats Frampton is because they n know he's gone somehow. They put up the mannequin only after they knew that he was gone. So considering we don't know about any other change in their life that would result in their opinion changing is probably his death. Blue 1, Alley Blue 2, Town Blue. For this interpretation, their emotions would go up, down, up in regards to Spamton. They would care enough to be the only one to check on him when he was to be evicted. A while after their disappearance, they call Spamton that and doesn't even want to talk about him. And then even later, they have the mannequin out. It, maybe because they feel guilty about not getting the Spamton in time to help him, and over time they chose to internalize that guilt and shift it to defensiveness and bitterness, and they're so desperate not to let that veneer crack that they don't even want to talk about Spamton. But after he's gone, there's no way to keep all those emotions bottled up, so, th so they decide to embrace them instead of running away again. They looked back on why they cared about him in the first place, and wanted to commemorate those emotions and him. Thus, the mannequin. Blue 2, Alley Blue 1, and Town Blue. Blue 2 and Town Blue do have some kind of concrete connection between them being the same person. They both had the same unique method of selling clothes as food. While one sells shoes, the other sell clothes. It still feels like a notable enough connection, though. In the pre Neo text, they say they don't know who Strengthen is, but later on, they have the mannequin. Considering it would be weird to have a mannequin of a guy you just heard about, it feels safe to assume that they're lying about never hearing about Spamton before. It's unknown why they would want to hide it. Maybe because some of the other Addisons put pressure on the others not to talk about Spamton. And after Spamton's death, they just didn't give a shit anymore. Blue 2, Alley 2, and Blue Town. Again, they have the mannequin later, so I'm pretty sure that they're lying. I feel similar to the Blue 1, Alley Blue 2, and Town Blue combination in the sense that they are also distancing themselves from Spamton because of the guilt of not being able to help him. But instead of using anger to distance themselves, this one completely denies it. They choose to suppress it completely. And again, like the blue one, alley blue two, and town blue combination, after Spamton was gone, they faced their emotions. Oh. 
So is ad blockers and ad unblockers for what seems to be a smaller business. But that is nullified when it's figured out they have a bigger business, which then makes that more of a side hustle. Their bigger store is a place that sells clothes and food. N none of the other Addisons do such a weird thing with their product. Out of all of the Addisons, maybe this blue Addison has the most fun with their work, selling how they want. We don't talk about that around here. They acknowledge Spamton's existence, but don't want to talk about him. Maybe because the others may seem upset or saddened by the mention of him. But that is purely based off the information right now. A bit later, they say, No idea who you're talking about. It's known that they know who Stampin' is due to them acknowledging him in the previous statement. Therefore, it reads as them blowing off the question. If we assume that this answer is indeed them blowing off the question, then that may imply that the first answer of, we don't talk about that around here, could be more defensive, and that the reason that Spamton is not to be talked about is partly due to them. Maybe them saying, we don't talk about that around here, was a mistake and was them thinking out loud, and later they correct themselves because them saying that they don't know who he is gives people less of a reason to talk to them about Spamton, which makes it easier for them to keep their defenses up because it is later shown that they didn't always have some kind of wariness in relation to Spamton. After a neutral retelling of a segment of Spamton's backstory, they get into something more personal. The retelling only includes Blue going to see Spamton, and they specifically go when he's re-evicted. They haven't seen each other for a while and wanted to help in some way, but Spamton left before they could. And after that, there was no sign of Spamton since and possibly presumed dead, as I previously said in the other segment. And then they began to build a mental wall so that they don't feel that guilt of not being able to help him that one time they tried to. And that wall stayed up until everyone assumed that he's 100% gone. And as I've said in the other segments, they chose to embrace their emotions and commemorate him because they did obviously care about him. Pink Objective Cotton Candy Pink sells cotton candy to Susie and Rousey. Pink One says, Two young beings together on a school night. Could I interest you in some brand new dating shoes? Ah, you two don't look together. Can I interest you in some brand new divorcing shoes? They sell shoes and uses romance slash relationships as a way to sell. Like Blue, they also sell shoes, but unlike Blue, they actually sell them as footwear. If you come back to them later with Susie and Rousey pre Spamton fight, they say, Ah, you three look together. How about some marriage shoes? Unlike Blue and Orange, they don't mention Spamton during this section of the game at all. They just continue to advertise. During the snow rave route, this Addison is the only one you can talk to. Oh, hun. Two young beings together on a school night. Could I interest you in some brand new dating shoes? Chris says them and Noel are something else, and Chris starts to walk away. Ah, you two don't look together. Can I interest you in some brand new divorcing shoes? If you're something else, maybe dating shoes isn't right. Maybe I could interest you in a freezer ring? Come on, Angel. You can't get stronger without good equipment. Just a small fee of- The only other character I've noticed called Noel Angel is Spamton, when you find the Thorn Ring. Both rings are equipped to Noel, and both are needed to complete Snowgrave. Pink 2. This pink sells tea in front of a bigger than average generic store. This is the hottest tea shop. Hot hot hot. 50% off. For $100, choose your own flavor. Okay. Choose your own flavor. Okay, here you go. If you answer no. But if you don't choose a flavor, who will? Out of the three Addisons, this one uses the most obvious advertising lingo. The capitalization, the punctuation, the urgent language. That is specifically shown if you don't buy the tea. Again, they also don't mention Spampton pre-Neophyte. They just continue to advertise the tea in front of the store. This is the hottest tea shop. Hot, hot, hot. 50% off. For $100, choose your own flavor. Again, they use a lot of advertiser talk. Alley Pink. When it's their turn to talk in the trash zone, they say, Suddenly, he got really good at his job. The clicks started piling up. What? What did he do? Why did he deserve this? We were all so jealous of him, we stopped going out with him. I mean, wasn't he a big shot? He didn't need us anymore, did he? They brought up that all of the Addisons were jealous of Spamton. I have to assume by we all, they mean all of the Addisons present at that moment. 
and saying that's the reason they stopped hanging out with him. They also specify the he and why did he deserve this when talking about why they were jealous. And they questioned if he really didn't need them anymore. Pink One and Ali Pink They sell shoes and use romance to sell, and pre Neo fight when everyone is talking about spending, they continue to try and sell their shoes. During Snowgrave, they are the only Addisane still out and selling. They are also in possession of the Fiesling that you have to kill them to get, because it's always out of your price range. The ring is needed to complete a genocide. They also call Noel Angel in Snowgrave, which is notable. But if you don't play Snowgrave and continue on to the trash zone, after defeating Spamping, then Pink brings up that they all hung out together and got jealous of Spamping when he got popular. Pink 2 and Alley Pink this Addison uses more advertisement lingo compared to the other two when selling their personalized teas. Just like the other pink Addison pre neophyte, they don't talk about Swampton and continue to sell their tea. Unlike the other pink Addison, they are not selling during Snowgrave. Then in the alley, they go on about how the Addisons were jealous and stopped hanging out with Swampton. Altogether, they sell shoes and tea and are in possession of a ring needed to complete the Snowgrave route. During said about, they are the only Addisons selling their, their product, and you need to get rid of them to get the ring. If you don't play the weird route, then you can see they don't talk, talk about Spamptain when prompted twice and continue trying to sell. And continuing on to the trash zone, they say that the Addisons were jealous of Spamptain, which led to them not spending time with him. Cotton Pink I'm not talking about this one, and I really doubt you're disappointed to hear that. Just stitch, and they sold cotton candy to whatever part you want. This video is interactive that way. Pink Subjective Pink 1 they sell in one of the larger to mid-tier stores. They also sell shoes and try to get the sale by appealing to romance. When Chris and Noelle walk up to them, they make the assumption that they're dating. When Chris says they're not, they immediately jump to divorce to sell another one of their products. They seem the most adept at selling, appealing to the high emotions that are involved in relationships and having a product to sell with every answer they could give, which could make the consumer feel awkward to deny said product. When the game comes back to them free Neo, unlike Blue and Orange, they don't mention Spamptain. They just continue to try and advertise. They could purposefully be avoiding talking about Spamptain by distracting whoever is asking by continuing to advertise, but if that was the case, it would make more sense to use the line, no idea who you're talking about. Or they could care more about selling than they do about Spamptain, so they don't even want to put in the effort of talking about him. That being the case would make them more money-oriented than any of the others. Either way, it hints that they have some sort of negative emotions towards Spamptain. And by the way, gonna save the weird about part for its own section because it feels more organized to me if I do it that way. Pink 2 This Addison uses the most obvious advertisement outside of Spamptain. They use a lot of capitalizations, punctuations, and desperate or urgent language. This Addison also seems to use advertisements that make you feel bad for not buying. This Addison just overall seems like quite the salesperson. Also, just like the other Pink Addison, they don't talk about Spamptain in the pre neo fight. So you can just copy and paste what I said in the previous section here. Alley Pink and During this section, they state that they were all jealous of Spamptain, but they seem to be the most jealous out of all of them. Illustrated by how, even now, they seem astonished that Spamptain even got successful. They specify the he in Why Did He Deserve This. They're not just upset that it happened to someone else. They were partly upset because it was specifically Spamptain that got popular. Maybe they had bad blood before the rise and fall? Though it's hard to hypothesize what he did to this pink specifically to upset them. Maybe the fact that they're so upset about it shows that they're more petty or hold a grudge more easily than the others. But the bitterness seems upon near the end though, when they question if Spamptain really did need them. And this line seems to hint that at least one of the reasons they have some kind of grudge against him is because they thought Spamptain just didn't need them anymore and felt left behind. The wasn't here big shot line that comes before the question feels like they're giving Spamptain a reason in their head to why he wouldn't want to hang out with them. That being because he was so much more successful. They say themselves that they were all jealous of Spamptain, but the root of their jealousy seems to be insecurity. Weird about Pink 1 When Pink is trying to sell the Fizz Ring, they call Noelle Angel. As far as I know, Spamptain is the only other character that calls her that, which feels like a specific thing to have in common. This one thing makes me ask a lot of questions. 
do they know what the vein can be used for? If they do, why then even offer to sell it? Or are they just that committed to getting a big sale? Because it's always one dollar out of your price range. Maybe this shows how career-oriented they really are. It has already been stated that they were jealous of Spamptain, maybe more so than the others, and still seem somewhat upset about it. So if they're selling it to get a big sale, then maybe they're still trying to get as big as Spamptain was. Maybe that explains the connection? They only try to sell after Chris starts to walk away. That seems to show that they weren't the most eager to sell it in the first place. If they were, they would have offered it right away. Maybe they did somehow know what it was and were thus hesitant to sell it? Considering they're the only ones still selling during this route, they do probably know something dangerous is going on, but they continue selling to achieve a goal. Surpassing Spamping, maybe? And they're so desperate to achieve it that they push past their worries at the last moment and try to sell it incessantly. Maybe the only reason they sell it in the weird route is because they know they're in danger. Considering everyone is evacuating and this is their last chance, but why do they have such a powerful item? Where did they get it? In this scene, why is there such an obvious connection between them and Spamptain? They both have powerful jewelry needed to complete a genocide, and they are the only two to specifically connect Noel to an angel. Spamptain has a reason. I mean, she's somewhat his savior in this route, but why pink? By the way, the, the weird route segment will be attached to pink one proper from now on. A pretty massive sidetrack, but this is something I just want to mention real quick. I have to assume anyone watching this who is actively into the game has noticed the religious shit that revolves around Noelle. But one thing I find really cool that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is, uh, have you guys heard about the crown of thorns? It's the thing that one guy wore during the thing. I'm pretty sure the ring of thorns that Spamton gives Noelle after calling her angel a couple times is referencing the crown. And according to Google, the wearing of the crown is a source of mockery and it carries a painful burden. I just think that's a very fun detail that adds to Noelle. I'm not talking about the cotton candy one. Pink one, Ali Pink. Pink one seems to have the most obvious connection to Spamton specifically shown in Snowgrave. As mentioned in the Ali segment, at least for this Addison, the jealousy was the result of them being insecure. The insecurities seem to have come up from them not being as big as Spamton. He of course could have specifically done something to them to make them angry, but we have no proper evidence of, of him doing that. Maybe that's why they ignored talking about Spamton and continue to sell so they could one day reach his heights and no longer feel inferior to him. They do seem to have some kind of realization that Spamton really was just like the rest of us at the end of the Spamton speech. That even though he was big, he still needed them, and the insecurity came from them and not him. And that thought makes them pause. At least that's what I like to think that the question snowballs into. And in Snowgrave, they're the only Addison still selling, and they end up dying because of it. Pink 2 and Alley Pink, very similar to the other one. They ignore even talking about Spamton because of their jealousy. They explain themselves as to where their jealousy came from, and hopefully comes to the revelation I previously spoke on. All. Pink 1 and Pink 2 are similar enough that I don't think I have to explain what would change if they were the same character. Their speech patterns change between stores, but I, I can't explain that. Conclusion. I absolutely don't want this to be seen as the definitive characterization of them. I adore seeing how different people interpret the Addisons, that's what inspired me to do this. This is just my version of that. And even if this whole thing isn't organized that well, I had a lot of fun doing this. Genuinely, thank you for watching this, I really appreciate it. Have a good night.